in a refrigerated chamber deep in the bowels of a Croatian museum, two strange artifacts have sat for more than 150 years. From an archaeological perspective, these two relics are quite unlike anything else in the world. In fact, this particular Egyptian mummy and the mysterious text found wrapped around it has been a rather infamous puzzle among archaeologists for decades. So, that of course begs the question, why isn't the Zagreb mummy better known to the wider public? Experts finally decipher ancient message wrapped around mummy. Well, part of the reason is that this cryptic bit of text that shrouds the Zagreb mummy is still puzzling linguists. Dubbed the Liber Lintius or Linen Book, it has connections to an ancient lost civilization and a long and complex history that experts are still trying to unravel. Thanks to recent research, though, answers are slowly beginning to reveal themselves. The story began in the mid-19th century, when much of the world was in the grip of a phenomenon known as Egyptomania. Some 50 years previously, the French military leader Napoleon Bonaparte had invaded Egypt, then part of the Ottoman Empire. And in doing so, he brought awareness of the region's ancient treasures to the wider world. Among Napoleon's armies, you see, were a number of people known as savants. Scientists and academics tasked with bringing the Enlightenment to foreign shores. When their findings were made public, it kickstarted a lasting obsession with Egyptology. And for decades, Westerners remained fascinated with this strange and mysterious land. Soon after the invasion, Napoleon's troops discovered the Rosetta Stone. A large rock slab inscribed with three ancient texts. Within a few decades, experts would use this artifact to translate the hieroglyphs that adorned the Egyptian pyramids and tombs. But there were some languages that remained impossible to crack. Take, for example, the strange script discovered on the linens of a mummy in Zagreb, the capital city of Croatia. Back in 1848, you see, a man named Mihajlo Bari became consumed with the urge to travel the world. So he quit his job at the Hungarian royal chancellery and, like many of his contemporaries, set sail for Egypt. There, Bari visited the city of Alexandria in northern Egypt, on the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. And it seems that he was very taken with his exotic choice of destination. In fact, he enjoyed his adventure so much that he decided to bring a souvenir back to Europe as a reminder. But in those days, there weren't any Egypt-branded refrigerator magnets or tiny models of the Great Sphinx for Bari to take home. So instead, he purchased an ancient sarcophagus and brought the relic back to his residence in the Austrian city of Vienna, along with its grim contents, of course. And that's how Bari wound up with an ancient Egyptian mummy on display in his sitting room. For reasons unknown, he chose to remove the linen strips that had been used to preserve the remains, placing them in their own glass case. And for years, this macabre souvenir served as little more than a bizarre talking point for visiting guests. When Bari died in 1858, reports claim, the mummy and its linen wrappings passed into the hands of his brother, Elijah. A priest living in the Croatian region of Slavonia, he had little interest in keeping this strange inheritance. So in 1867 he donated the contents of the sarcophagus to the archaeological museum in Zagreb. Up until this point, it appears, the strange symbols that covered the linen strips had gone unnoticed. But when the artifacts arrived at the museum, staff began to suspect that they were dealing with something a little out of the ordinary. Not long afterwards, Heinrich Brugsch, an Egyptologist from Germany, arrived to examine the mummy. For the first time, the markings inscribed onto the linen were closely examined. And at first, Brugsch assumed that the symbols were hieroglyphs from ancient Egypt, similar to the ones recently decoded by the Rosetta Stone. But a chance encounter ten years later revealed just how wrong he had been. In 1877 Brugge found himself discussing runes with the famous British explorer Richard Burton, who was himself an accomplished linguist. And over the course of the conversation, they realized that the symbols on the Zagreb mummy were not hieroglyphs at all. Instead, the two men speculated that they might be an Arabic version of the Egyptian funerary text known as the Book of the Dead. For over a decade, nothing else was learned about this mysterious script. Then, in 1891 the linen strips were returned to Vienna, where they had first been displayed in Bari's sitting room. In the Austrian capital, Coptic language expert Jacob Kroll conducted his own analysis with surprising results. 
Thanks to his impressive knowledge, Kral was able to identify the language written on the scripts, and it wasn't Arabic or ancient Egyptian. Instead, it was Etruscan, dating back to an ancient civilization that had once thrived in modern-day Italy. But even with this identification, the text proved almost impossible to translate. Thousands of years after ancient Egyptian culture began to thrive on the banks of the Nile, the Etruscan civilization emerged in the Mediterranean, hundreds of miles to the east. Over time, it grew in power and influence, becoming an important trading hub between the wealthy Greek and Celtic worlds. Eventually, in the 4th century BC, Roman soldiers conquered the Etruscan territory and its people were assimilated into the growing empire. But their language and religious rituals did not disappear without a trace. Instead, they were adopted by this new culture, where they continued to evolve and shift as the centuries passed. Over time, though, the Latin language, which had been partially inspired by Etruscan, took over, rendering the older script obsolete. And today, it is considered something of a mystery, even by the most experienced of linguists. In fact, only a small handful of surviving texts have ever been located, of which the Liber Lintius is the longest. Because Etruscan is so rare, the language has proved almost impossible to crack over the years. And although a number of attempts have been made, experts are yet to agree on any universal translation. Back in Kral's time, though, the language that he discovered etched onto the Zagreb mummy's linens was even more incomprehensible than it is today. Despite these challenges, Kral was able to make some progress, rearranging the snippets of text into their correct order. As it turns out, the strips form a document consisting of 12 pages, laid out from right to left. Unfortunately, the first three sections are heavily damaged, making it difficult to pinpoint the beginning of the book. Over time, some partial translations of the text's 1,200 words have been proposed, revealing certain dates and the names of Etruscan deities. With this in mind, then, some have suggested that the text once served as a religious calendar, used to ensure that rituals and ceremonies were correctly timed. But even with these insights, one burning question remained. What was this Etruscan text doing wrapped around a mummy discovered in Egypt, thousands of miles away? From the early 20th century onwards, multiple researchers have attempted to solve this riddle, picking over the Liber Lintius in search of answers. Using infrared photography techniques, experts have been able to analyze the text in greater detail than before. And over time, a number of theories have emerged. Initially, it was believed that the remains wrapped in the mysterious text were those of a native Etruscan who had, at some stage, resettled in Egypt. Certainly, this would explain why the unidentified woman was mummified, even though the Etruscans typically practiced cremation. Perhaps the Liber Lintius, then, was a way for the deceased's family to combine her native customs with those of her adopted home? Although this might seem like a logical conclusion, a papyrus scroll found inside the sarcophagus casts doubt on this theory. According to reports, the papyrus was inscribed with the Egyptian Book of the Dead. And even though it was heavily damaged, it was still legible enough for researchers to pick out some key details. According to this document, the deceased was a woman named Nisi Hensu, once the wife of a tailor. But Nisi Hensu and her husband, Par Hensu, hailed from Thebes in Egypt, not the Etruscan civilization. In fact, some have theorized that the deceased may have had no connection whatsoever with the mysterious language that found its way into her tomb. So what happened? And how did these two seemingly unrelated artifacts become entwined in such an intimate way? According to experts, the Liber Lintius dates from around 250 BC and was probably produced in the southeast of the region now known as Tuscany. Thebes, meanwhile, was located on the banks of the Nile, where the modern city of Luxor stands today. In other words, any journey between the two locations would have been an undertaking of epic proportions. Although we do not know the age of the human remains found alongside the Liber Lintius, mummification was practiced in Egypt until at least the 4th century AD. In theory, then, centuries could have passed between the creation of the text and its use in Nisi Hensu's funerary rites, leaving plenty of time for it to make the journey. Perhaps, as some have theorized, the Liber Lintius was simply the only linen available when embalmers were working on Nisi Hensu's remains. If so, the presence of the text was a mere accident, rather than an intentional choice. 
and the most significant example of Etruscan script ever discovered was preserved through nothing more than chance. But the identity of the Zagreb mummy is not the only thing that has puzzled experts for generations. Even with the latest technology, the text itself, with a few exceptions, has remained untranslated. Recently, though, some new insights have emerged that have helped to unravel the mystery of the ancient document. In 2008, for example, historical linguist Glenn Gordon published a PDF on his blog, Polyglot. In it, he had collected more than 1,000 Etruscan words along with their English equivalents, creating one of the most comprehensive dictionaries of the forgotten language to date. And ever since, amateurs have been using it as a basis for their own translations. In 2010 one Wikipedia user drew upon Gordon's dictionary to decipher one of the phrases found within the Liber Lintius. Apparently, the text, A C N I C S T R E C I L C D I L A P U R E T R E C E N A, roughly translates as, for the soul to endure remain in the town of night and amidst the people. But the author himself has pointed out a few issues with this approach. According to Gordon, this translation of the original Etruscan is incorrect, apparently due to his own flaws in presenting his method. Instead, in a blog post dated January 2011, he proposes a number of alternative solutions. One reads, for example, for the spirit of night, for the city, and for its people everlasting. Another potential translation, according to the blog, would be to the night spirit and to the city everlasting. And that's not all. Interestingly, Gordon raises the question of whether this night spirit is plural or singular, the difference between an actual assemblage of lost souls and a symbol of the recently deceased. Whatever the meaning behind the Liber Lintius, though, it seems clear that this ancient document will continue to puzzle linguists for many years to come. Meanwhile, the inscribed linen strips and the mummy that they once accompanied have become unlikely stars of the show at the Archaeological Museum in Zagreb. According to reports, tens of thousands of visitors pour through the doors of the museum every year, gazing on exhibits such as the Vuetel Dove. A relic from the ancient culture of the same name, this ceramic vessel is thought to date from between 2800 and 2500 BC. And it is considered so significant that it has even appeared on banknotes issued in its native country. Elsewhere, the museum is also home to the Lombarda Sophisma, a stone tablet telling the story of an ancient Greek settlement on an island off the Croatian coast. But both of these artifacts pale in comparison to the Liber Lintius, which is kept carefully preserved in its own refrigerated room. In fact, despite several attempts to analyze and translate it over the years, the Liber Lintius has remained in remarkably pristine condition given its age. Historians were given a fright, though, when a 5.3 magnitude earthquake struck Zagreb in March 2020, the most powerful in 140 years. In the upheaval, the city's archaeological museum sustained severe structural damage. Fortunately, the Liber Lintius, along with the museum's other star exhibits, survived the quake intact. But other objects, some dating back to ancient Egypt and Greece, were sadly destroyed. And the world came alarmingly close to losing one of its most fascinating artifacts before its secrets could finally be revealed. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.